Okay, so let's go and meet John Harrison. Uh, we've got some really nice articles on Ask a Biologist, but it's not the same as being able to see them in their native environment. Just on the way, I'm going to show you some cool pictures of the inside of insects and just talk a little bit about, you know, insects breathe totally differently than we do. These are x-ray images of the inside of insects. They breathe through these tubes. These are air-filled tubes on the inside of a beetle. And you can see they even run right up through their antenna. And that's how their cells get oxygen, instead of going through the blood like it does in humans. I'll be darned. I didn't know that. Huh. You're saying that they don't have lungs pumping oxygen throughout their body. That's right. Ah, all right. Oh. So we'll lead you into the lair here. OK. Where we have been studying the flight of some really amazing beetles. And we happen to have some uh, goliath beetles here. My colleague, right. Dr. Clock, is going to show you goliath beetle. Oh, all right. So he has one of the two males we have. And this was a captive bred specimen. Wow. And this is actually a small male. That's a small male. Yeah, so the structures you see up here are actually just a magnet we attach to the top. So that will allow us to place it on the flight mold so it will be going for its daily exercise. You exercise every day, right, Dr. Biology? Actually, I do. In the mornings. Oh. This is like a treadmill for a beetle. This is it. There we go. That's the idea. So who came up with this idea? This is Fox. Uh, well, although actually, people have been doing this for years with insects. It's yeah. an old method for studying the flight of insects. And of course, we're interested in how uh, bugs of different sizes fly and get oxygen. And uh, isn't this a cool thing to get to do? This is amazing. I'm almost getting dizzy watching it going around. Yeah, how fast is your is your camera there, Dr. Biology? Yeah. Is it blur yet? <laughs> this is amazing. Isn't that awesome? I love the sound. Yeah, so you'll notice the beetle will start flying faster and faster, and that's as the flight muscles are warming up. Oh, I see. They're warming their muscles. But probably not for the same reasons that you and I warm our muscles before working out. Yeah. Not the way we do. We warm up. Our body temperature stays the same, right? At, right. Uh, 98.6 Fahrenheit. Right. right. We don't really get warmer. But these beetles, this beetle started at room temperature. And if we stop it and you touch the top of its back, you'll feel that it's warm. It's actually heating up its flight muscle to the same temperature as the inside of our bodies. Oh. Uh, uh, many large insects. We were, just, we were just talking about this. And, and the way different animals actually control their body temperature. Uh, and so this is, right. this is really very amazing. So is this, you just put them on here, is, is there anything more? Or you, I mean, how do you measure the, the oxygen? Because I mean, we've got a lot of oxygen in this room, I hope, right? At the moment, the idea is just to exercise the beetles because we found that if they sit for too long in the containers, they really get lazy and they, after a few weeks, they become very reluctant to fly. So right now, it's just to exercise them, but Pretty soon we will be linking up instruments that will tell us how fast they go in circles and also how many revolutions they do so we can calculate speed and distance. And we will also be building an oxygen tent around the flight mode. And that will then allow us to reduce the oxygen while the beetles are flying. And they should stop flying when the oxygen becomes sort of at the low limit. So let's talk a little bit about oxygen and beetles. I mean, this is a big beetle, but my understanding is there have been some really, really big insects. But this was a little while back, right? Well, yeah, uh, Dr. Biology. About 300 million years ago, there were beetles um, up to eight times bigger than the largest beetles that we, or largest insects that we have today. Uh, they were some proto dragonflies and, and some other types of insects that we don't we no longer have. And uh, one of the questions has been why don't we have those giant insects today? And one of the things that geologists have shown us is that atmospheric oxygen has dropped tremendously since then. It was about thirty percent at that time in the in the late Paleozoic. Now it's twenty one percent. 
people are, that one hypothesis is that that drop in oxygen is the reason that we've lost the giant insects. So, I, I got to see the one that was a, a giant dragonfly. Uh, what was the name? Meganura. Meganura, right. It was, I think it was about the size of a small hawk. They're pretty big, or they were pretty big, yeah, and it's, and it's kind of a, a amazing to think about uh, insects of that size uh, flying around. Um, so what we're really doing today is looking at insects of different sizes and see how they do in different oxygens, he, see if there's any evidence in, in insects today that if you're a bigger insect, it's harder to get oxygen. Will this beetle just keep flying? Or do they finally wear out and, yeah. and relax? They fly anywhere between, uh, this one in particular flies anywhere between 5 to 15 minutes. And then it starts to slow down. Wow. It gets a good workout. Though so I also, when I was here, oh perfect, perfect. Let me just, let me take a close up of our, our star here. So, it's just straighten them out. Isn't it gorgeous? We need to actually. Do we have some? We've got this very cool red light going, um, and I'm moving back this you way. And let's just see. No, I just wanted to get to a place where we could see if we can get them to focus in. And there we go. How long do these beetles live? I have kept some of the beetles for approximately 14 months alive in the lab. Wow. 14 months? 14 months, but they do maintain their top condition for about two months or so when they are active and they are uh, very responsive flyers and they give a decent metabolic rate. After that, they are visibly aging. But it's important to remember they live for probably two years underground as a grub. Oh, yes, yes. So yes. The, we're just talking here about the adults. Yeah, just the adult. Now, I see a nice fancy camera here and if I recall the last time I was here we had some uh, really interesting experiments so not only were you measuring uh, the oxygen uh, that these beetles use but then you were actually controlling them I mean, right. kind of like a radio controlled plane someday huh right so we can use the, the devices up here these um, to generate different currents and we put these uh, electrodes, you can see these little wires that go uh, right into the brain of the beetles. Okay. And uh, with those, we can send a signal to tell the beetle to fly. And then we can have the beetle inside this little box and flow air through it. This is a, a device that measures the rate at which air will flow by there. And then the beetle will take oxygen out of the air and put carbon dioxide into the air as they breathe and that's measured with these instruments. So we can measure their, how much oxygen they're taking up, how much CO2 they're giving off. This is a little device that measures their lift, how much force they're generating with their wings to push them, to keep them up in the air. Uh, and then we use the camera to um, do high speed video of their wings so we can see how well they're flying. Well, I have to say, this is one of the cooler labs around between all the, the neat gadgets you've got here and, and your, your, your stars here. I've got I to gotta come into your star one more time, and I have to thank you all for uh, visiting with us today and uh, encouraging everybody to come up and not only read about you, what you do, and why you do it, but some of the research you're doing. And we have a really fun experiment that you guys worked with us on called the virtual manduka where they can work with uh, caterpillars. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Dr. Biology.